Hello again. This is attorney Sean Smith here with another podcast called The Law Matters. I am so excited to have as my guest today the people who gave birth to me, my parents uh, and the grandparents to my children, Richard and Sherry Smith. Welcome to the podcast, Mommy and Daddy. Yes, thank you for thank you for the invitation. Tell me a little bit about your backgrounds. First starting with you, Daddy. Where were you born? I was born in Kingston, Jamaica. So you're a Jamaican? Yes, man. <laughs> <laughs> but you left Jamaica at a very young age. I though. left when I was eight years old. And moved where? My parents had moved to Canada, so my sister and I, we stayed with our grandparents. And after about a year or so, we moved to Montreal, Canada, um, where we became citizens. I still carry a Canadian citizen's passport. so. We, from Jamaica to Montreal, Canada, then we moved to the States. And how long did you live in Canada, Daddy? About five, about six years. I think about six years. Now, in terms of being from Canada, is that why you are a hockey fan? Absolutely. And who's your favorite? Montreal Canadian. Uh. Live and die Montreal Canadians. Um, my hockey experience goes back to when there were just five teams in the National Hockey League. Mm. And it was always a competition between Montreal and Boston or Montreal and New York. The goalie that time was Jacques Plant. Uh, at that time, he was the only one that wore a mask. So yes, diehard hockey fan, still Montreal Canadian fan. But learning to like the Tampa Bay because of you. Tampa Bay Lightning. Yes. Yeah. Now, being a hockey fan, surprisingly, you also know how to ice skate. Is yes, I haven't been for years, but I, I remember when um, we moved to Montreal. And I had my pair of skates and really wanted to play hockey. My friends would not let me use a hockey stick because they said I would be leaning on the hockey stick and that would retard uh, my time in learning how to skate. Yeah. I see. Now, I love while, ice skating. Now, while you were in Canada learning how to ice skate, Mommy, where are you from? I'm from Bermuda, but I was born in New York. How is that possible? My mom, because of her age, mm -hmm. the doctors recommended that she go to New York because we, my, her relatives were well, her brother and his wife were there and his sister. So we went. She went there and gave birth to me at Parkway Hospital, Manhattan, in New York. In New York. And then you grew up in Bermuda. I grew up. I spent three years of my life in New York with my grandmother, uh -huh. and then I went. To back to Bermuda to be with my, my parents. I see. Now, where did you two meet? Where did uh, you guys, Daddy and Mommy, where did you guys end up meeting one another? We met at Pine Forge Academy. Uh, by the way, presently Pine Forge Academy is one of five remaining black boarding school. And it's the only one in the Seventh-day Adventist Church uh, in North America. But we met at Pine Forge Academy. We were, she came in our junior year, mm -hmm. met when we were juniors at Pine Forge. And you two have been together ever since? Ever since juniors <laughs> in Pine Forge, yes. <laughs> and when did, you, when did you get married? 1974. 19, and then I was born on May 21st. 1976. Six. And I was born where my mommy is from, which is in Bermuda. Bermuda. So right. those of you who do not know, I'm an extreme Bermuda fan, and I, I bleed Bermuda pink and blue. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's interesting to note, because your mother is an American, uh, when you were born, also your sister, we went down to the American embassy there in Bermuda mm -hmm. and uh, took out... Um, United, United, United States, States citizenship. Yeah. yeah, so you you and your sister, as well as your mother, carry U.S. as well as Bermuda c citizenship. Now, you mentioned my sister, and some people listening may not know who she is. What is her name, and when was she born? Rache, no, her name is Rache Chanel Smith. Pascal. Pascal. <laughs> She's born January 1986. Mm -hmm. And, of course, she has. she's fortunate to have her father, mother and brother's name yes yes now she why why was there's there's a 10 years difference between me and my sister why you couldn't have another baby between that time to be honest mm -hmm. i was very happy having my son <laughs> i had the son and i had just lost my father uh -huh. and so it was like you had replaced the male part that i was missing mm -hmm. and so um after two or three years he wanted a little girl, and I said, well, I have my son, I have my son. So we kept trying and trying and trying, nothing happened, 
and then within the ten, within the nine years, we got pregnant for Shane. Well, I got pregnant for Shane. We um, had a foster child, a little boy. We had right. to rearrange for that. And we were really looking, well, I guess I was looking forward to at some point adopting this little boy. And then she got pregnant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the boy that you were done, so we to adopt. Yeah, however, well, I've have, I've had the opportunity of meeting him when right. I lived in Bermuda. I had the opportunity of meeting him. He's doing very well. Married, he is uh, a teacher. Mm. Yeah, so, uh, we. But at that time, his foster mother, who had left, wanted him, so she was able to get him to get custody of him for her to him to return to the mm. states with her. So it was like a trade-off. I see. I, I didn't even realize that, because I, I remember the foster boy in our house, but I didn't realize the reason why he left was because you got pregnant with my sister. I don't want to say we got pregnant with her. It was the fact that it was both things were going on at the same time. Mm -hmm. His mother then called for him mm -hmm. to come to be with him while his foster mother. Mm -hmm. So, and then I was pregnant, so it wasn't like we gave him up because we were pregnant. It was that it was the it timing was the perfect, time. yes. Now, as you know, I practice in the area of elder law, and one of the things that you spoke about earlier, Mother, is your dad. What were some of the things that you're, and first tell us when he passed away, and then what are some of the things that he left you when he passed away? Dad died a month before we were due to get married, which is October 31st. Um, in his death, he left my brother and I a few homes and, mm -hmm. of course, a taxi. Each of those homes were debt-free. Mm -hmm. And so I lived under the ruling that if you can't pay, pay cash, you don't need it. Mm -hmm. Also stated that you, if renting something was paying someone else's mortgage. Mm -hmm. So those things were instilled in my mind up until now. Mm -hmm. So we, we were able to acquire those homes and they were, like I said, debt free. But we added on, we, my brother got his share and I took my share, which was the two houses. And my brother got the main house and the tax. So how many siblings do you have, Mama? I have one brother. And Daddy, how many siblings do you have? I have one sister. I had um, one full sister and two half sisters. Mm -hmm. I see. So one of the things I remember in growing up in Bermuda is the homes that granddaddy left us, even though I never met him. And I remember there being three homes, right. and they were uh, all on the same line in the hill in Bermuda. So this is some, an asset that your dad left for, for you right. that you were able to partake of. Correct. But now you sold one of those homes. <laughs> Don't tell my father. No. Uh, yeah, we sold one of the homes. In all honesty, it was like a legacy because my, my father, all his brothers, mm -hmm. my dad's house was at the very top of the hill, and from his house all the way down to the, to the end of the hill was all his brothers. When they died, they left it to their children. Mm -hmm. The one house that we sold, and the reason we sold that house was because the fact that we were living in the States, and it was a lot of maintenance to take place. Excuse me, Dad built those houses way back when. They had metal plumbing. And so the metal were rotten because we didn't have, we couldn't afford to do it ourselves. So we sold that one house. Mm -hmm. And with the selling of that one house is what we decided to buy a house mm -hmm. here yeah, in Florida. Yeah. Um. Let me back up to about that time I got a call, telephone call, inviting me to interview at Pine Forge for the principalship. Mm -hmm. So it, it, that, that's, that's the time we were leaving, right? That's one of the reasons why we... Well, we, well, we were here at Pine Forge is when the incident took place with the pl pl plumbing breaking down and oh, bursting okay. and things like that. So okay. we decided to, to sell it. So... You were living in this home, and then you went back and went to teach at, at Pine Forge Academy in what part of Pennsylvania? Principal of Pine, Pine Forge. Forge. Uh, Pine, near Pottstown. Yeah, near Pottstown, Pennsylvania, and 50 mi yes, 20 miles east of Reading and 50 miles west of Philadelphia. I see. Now, what did you do with the money that you got for that home? We purchase another house Where? in Orlando, Florida. Now, and you don't own that house in Rosemont anymore either. <laughs> so there's a, you have a, a, a consistency of selling off all your assets so your children don't get any. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> no. That's, that's Our children joke. will get two houses. <laughs> one house each. <laughs> three. There are three houses. Let's go with it. So how many homes do you own now? We own... Well, we don't really own the homes because we gave the home to you, 
mm-hmm. in Orlando, mm-hmm. and Rashea has the home in Bermuda. Uh-huh. Now we have this house, house we just purchased in Douglasville, uh-huh. and we're giving that to the grandkids. And, and, and God, the is, God is good because he enabled us to purchase that house for cash, so yeah. that's good. Now, when you think about leaving a legacy to your children, mm-hmm. Mommy, anytime I talk about um, transferring your assets and your estate, the the main thing you always say is that you're, you're going to do what? You're going to spend all your money. <laughs> Don't you say that? I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you the B and B, which is the buildings and the bills. Uh-huh. We're spending all the cash money <laughs> because I don't want to do what my daddy did. did. He left us lots of money. Uh-huh. And we, I mean, we have things to show for it, but... Mm-hmm. I just think you need to learn to respect the money and the buildings. I see. Do you agree with your wife with that, Daddy? I'm a good husband, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> when, you, you know, you recently had us do a trust, mm-hmm. and I always thought that trusts were for really rich people. Uh, when I was working in, in Florida um, for this particular organization, there was a doctor there, and, she, you know, she said, Richard, I, I don't own anything. Uh, everything is in the trust. She said, the only thing that I own is the car I drive. Mm-hmm. She said, everything else is, is in trust. And I, I, well, I said, yeah. In my mind, I said, yeah, you're rich. You can do trust. <laughs> <laughs> so, so based upon some of the conversations I had with you, is that surprising to know that, listen, tr- the trust is not just for the extremely wealthy, but also yes. for those yeah. in the middle class as, yeah. as well? Yes. Yeah. yeah, and that's one thing that we had had you do is is to we drafted a trust and had you sign your trust. Lots of papers to sign. <laughs> In addition to the property uh, and and some of the assets, what else do you want to leave to to your kids? If you was, you know, if something was to happen to you today, what words would you want to leave with? Weave to my sister and I. When you say, are you talking about physical things or you? Uh, what wisdom? What advice? Love God, love your family. Bonding time is mm-hmm. very important to me. I, I'm a family person, so the quality time that you spend with God, the quality time you spend with your kids makes a large difference in my life. Because Dad died when I was 22, but everything that he taught me still remains in my mind because it was serious to him. And so I took on those legacies. So that is what I would leave for you guys. Spend that bonding. Family, like I said, is very important to me. I think the things that I would want to leave with you, you and your sister are already doing it. Uh, I want family that is close, and I always tell people, you guys are 10 years apart, you can get on the phone and talk for hours, even though you're 10 years apart. So that closeness, close relationship that your mother is talking about, that's happening now. I I see that happening now. To continue it. Yeah. One of the things I forgot to talk about is what are your professions? What is the area um, in which you, you, you work. You mentioned principalship, and what, what, what do you do, Mommy? I'm a guidance counselor, uh-huh. and I do learning support, which is helping those kids who have learning disabilities or you know, things that need acquire accommodations. And tell our, our audience a little bit about the things that you used to do, Dad. You mentioned you were a principal. What other positions have you Hell, oh my goodness! <laughs> recently, oh, in, recently. In, in, in that particular <laughs> okay, general area, yeah. That's, we don't want your whole life story. <laughs> oh, okay, when we moved to Bermuda a few years ago because your mother wanted to go uh, to Bermuda, I became a social worker in the hospital there in Bermuda, and truly, really enjoyed being the social worker. Um, have had a, have an opportunity to really helping individuals, and one of the things that. Um, is instrumental to social workers in Bermuda, those that are in the hospital. Uh, Because of limited facilities that the hospital may have, many times individuals have to come over to the states. And uh, as a social worker, you you facilitate that. So I enjoyed doing that very much. Um, After retirement, I was able to get a part-time job um, in an organization that deals with people who have cancer. I had cancer, and so I was really able to bond with them. And one of the things that always, not surprised me, but always have me take a second thought, uh, as part of the intake, I would ask the individual, well, when did you get cancer? And about 50, 60 percent of them said, well, which time? Mm-hmm. And so I said, you've had cancer more than once, and some individuals have had reoccurrence of cancer two and three times. So. You know, uh, God has been good to me. I just had a, a recent uh, colonoscopy, and the cancer is fine. But um, 
guidance counselor, uh, not guidance counselor, but social worker. Been a social and superintendent. Worker. Oh, sorry, superintendent. I forgot about that. <laughs> Most of my life has been in education. Okay. I was fortunate enough to, after I left the principalship of Pine Forge Academy, I was offered uh, through the Seventh-day Adventist Church to be a superintendent over our schools here in Florida. Mm -hmm. Also in Bermuda, I was also a superintendent of education for the school that we have there in Bermuda. Thanks, so I've forgotten that. Yes, <laughs> it's probably forgotten that due to your, your age. Age, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so education is extremely important to yeah, you. Yeah, and, yes. and, and in fact, it just so happens that education is the occupation that both your mother and I are involved with. So if education Education is so important to you. Why didn't you want your son to get into education when he had a desire to be a professor when he was attending college and university, but you steered him instead into the law profession? When you were, <laughs> when you were younger, uh -huh. your report cards always stated, Sean is an excellent student, but he talks too much. Mm -hmm. So I figured, what, and you always like to debate with your father about why you shouldn't get this punishment or that punishment. And you said you like law. So I said, okay, well, th this is something you would like to do. Well, no, no, Education, no, no, no. I, well, I'm, I, I'm not finished. Let me interrupt. But he education. never liked the law. He said, because lawyers cheat and lie. <laughs> That's what he used to say. He didn't want to be a lawyer because they cheat and lie. Yes. But, but you kept insisting that he become a lawyer. <laughs> Delete that. But anyway, <laughs> he, he wanted to, I said to him, if you became, and plus you love to spend money. You wanted these big time cars and Jaguars and things like that. And I said, well, you can't get that on a teacher's salary. Mm -hmm. So we, we didn't deter you, we said, okay, try it out, mm -hmm. because, and then you said you wanted to be a pastor. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, you don't need to be, you don't need, have to go into theology to preach. You can be a lawyer and still preach. Mm -hmm. And so you'd be able to facilitate both of those vocations mm -hmm. in one one aspect, which is what you did. And so you went into law, and, and in fact, when you were telling the kids, when you came to our school to do career fair, you said to them, be sure that you know what you want to do because right now it can change. Mm -hmm. Remember, that was one of the things. And so look, you went into law, you started out criminal law, you're prosecuting attorney, then you went to um, defense attorney, and now you're, 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 you're going oh, out, mom. right. So you're still in the law area, mm -hmm. but you're, you're branching out into the different aspects from the root of the tree. And no, I, I did give you a difficult time, but I, I want to thank you for um, pushing me into law because I am able to do all three of those things. I'm able to teach law. Now, now that's one of the things I love now in teaching law to to older individuals about what are the different plans and what are the different tools that they can utilize at this age. Now, one of the things that I talk about in some of the seminars that I do, Daddy, is that vacation we took to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where we went to Sight and Sound, uh, all the family was together, and then uh, I think it was my sister or my wife who gave, gave me a call and said, hey, listen, you need to come up. Daddy has has passed out. Oh, yeah. you, you remember that? Yeah, yes. very well. Tell 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 everyone about. Yeah, that. Um, I was having um, severe stomach aches, and I remember going back to the uh, Airbnb. There was a long hallway, and in my head, I said, I "Just hope I can make it to the door. Just hope I can make it to the door." And when I got to the door, the rest of you folks told me I I didn't. I think I lost consciousness, but people told me that I, that I did lose consciousness. Mm -hmm. And the ambulance came, uh, took me to the hospital, and they, what, they had to pump my stomach or something like that. But I, I, I got word from my grandkids, because um, they were crying when mm -hmm. I was there. I, oh, it just touched my heart, yes. touches it now. Mm -hmm. yeah. So do you remember that, Mommy, too? Sure do. What 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 were you thinking when we came up and we opened the door and we, we saw, saw him that lying there on the floor? I'm like, please don't let this happen to me. Not right now. What is the this that you're referring to? Dying. Just, I mean, and I've always said to him, if you die, I'm gonna put toothpicks in your eyes so that you see me, so I can knock you. Say, why are you doing this? Because I mean, I mean, we're at the age now where death is inevitable. Mm -hmm. I mean, my father died at 59, and fortunately for me, my mom died at 101. Mm -hmm. But who says I'm going to live to 101? So I figured these are the years now that we can, you know, live. I mean, we have the children, they have their homes. So we have nothing else but time for us. Mm -hmm. So my desire is that we travel. I want to do a year-round cruise. You've done a lot of that recently. A lot of but I want to live on the boat for like 180 months, days. Yeah.
So that, is that what you were thinking when you saw Daddy lying there, that you're not going to be able to travel around? Yes, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so when did, so I don't know if you all remember, but you were there, the, the ambulance came, then there was a debate, well, who's going to be in the ambulance with yes. you as we travel to the hospital? Yeah, let me interrupt. Connie, uh, your wife, was very instrumental. Yes. When I said, she was she said, I said, I just need to close my eyes for a little bit. So don't sleep, don't close your eyes. Yes. She was extremely, extremely yes. helpful. She was extremely calm. Yes, yes. very calm. <laughs> Everybody else was, was, was worried. Yes. And how long were you in the hospital? Do you remember? Three, four, I'm, I'm, he came out Christmas Day. Christmas Day? Yeah, mm-hmm. about three, four days. In fact, it was our wedding anniversary. He went in the hospital Oh, the 22nd. And then you came out the 25th. And do you remember what the diagnosis was from the hospital? That upper um, something. Uh, yeah, I, upper, I think there was a, a blockage in my upper stomach. Something. A bowel obstruction. A bowel, a bowel obstruction. Thank you, bowel. <laughs> <laughs> I tell the story so often. So <laughs> <laughs> Daddy, as, when, going through that situation for you, what did... What did it make you think about, you know, how much longer you have on this earth and what preparations you have in place or don't have in place? Your, your mother doesn't like to hear this, but I am not afraid of dying. I don't want to die in a fire or fall down from some tall building. Mm-hmm. But death is not something that I am really scared about. Um, and this particular time in Philadelphia, I didn't think I was going to die. I didn't feel I was going to die, so that never came to my mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when I had cancer, and was in the hospital, I remember uh, lots of people praying. And I said, obviously, I don't want to die. I want to be healthy. But pray more that my life is right with God. So, you know, if I should die in resurrection, I'm in the first resurrection. So, <laughs> I, I'm, I, again, I'm not afraid of dying. But, you know, I don't want to be tortured. Uh-huh. But the, the thought of death doesn't really scare me. Now you brought up cancer. When were you diagnosed with, first diagnosed with colon cancer? Do you remember? Wow, back... 2003, 2004 was the operation. Yeah, okay, well, 2003, 2004. And it's interesting, I had these stomach aches and I was losing weight, but I was jogging, so I thought I was losing weight because I was jogging. And uh, I remember I was at the Florida conference at that time, and I remember when I would go on overnight trips, I would just be in pain. My stomach. You mentioned the Florida conference. What is the Florida conference? Uh, Yeah, thank you. The Florida conference (laughs) is um, one of the entities of the Seventh Day Adventist Church. There are different uh, structures. You have a group of churches, which makes up uh, a group of people, which would make up a church. Uh, the group of churches which make up a conference, a group of conference which makes up a union, a group of union which makes up a division, and then the general conference. So and you were working in the education department for this group. For the you Florida were conference. supervising te- teachers and schools. Yes, I was the administrative superintendent. Uh, right. I, I enjoyed that too very, very much because I could use uh, my master's degrees in counseling. Mm-hmm. And while I would not want to do counseling now on a regular basis because I don't want to be listening to people's problems. Um, But the skills I I was taught as a counselor, I utilized very, very much um, as the superintendent of the Florida Conference. I I remember that you had a a consultation and and mommy called me crying and I remember being in a... In a A meeting. Yeah, it was was a meeting. Yeah, I was in Tampa, and I was taking some continuing legal education courses, CLE courses, when Mommy called me crying and said, listen, you need to come here because your daddy has colon cancer. Do you, daddy, do you remember that? Uh, I lived that. I heard from the story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then I came, drove from Tampa to Orlando, and then through that process, I think you had chemo. Yes. And then you had surgery. And no, surgery. Surgery and then chemo. I don't remember which one was I first. think I had radiation. Radiation. radiation too. A- and chemo. Yeah. And chemo. So I had both of those. And I remember after your surgery, there was this big hole in your My stomach. stomach. Yeah. Yes. That they would have to clean yeah. on a weekly basis. Because it healed from the outside in and not from the inside out. Yeah. So we had to open it. And and was that that experience? I know that experience for for me allowed me to think. Okay, hey, you know, time is short. Um, but then you reco- seem to be co- recover yeah. fairly well from mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Other than your stomach that growls real loud yeah. <laughs> and your bowel obstructions that yeah. send you to the hospital, <laughs> <laughs> and your repeat colonoscopies that you have to take. Um, but you know, like mommy said, life is short. Yeah. 
Um, but you're not afraid to die. Yeah, absolutely not. Are you no, I don't want to be tortured. No, please bear that in mind. But no, death doesn't scare me. Well, I mean, are you afraid to die? I, I don't know. I, I'm not, I don't think about death like that. I just think about life. How mm -hmm. am I going to live life? Mm -hmm. Now, like Daddy says, I don't want to be tortured. And, and I don't want to be knocked down. If I'm going to die, I want to die in my sleep. But I don't think about it. In, in, in long term like your father does. I just think what I can do. For instance, since my dad died from a heart attack, I knew for a fact that I need to consistently, mm -hmm. consistently have physicals to check on my heart, do blood tests and everything like that. And what is that? Stress test. All of those things I do because mm -hmm. it can happen to me. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if I have dad's genes. I don't know if I have mom's genes who died from 101. So I repeatedly do all my tests and everything and they tell me that I'm a low... I'm on a low um, scale for heart attack, but mm -hmm. I don't take it for granted. What, once, once the two of you pass away, oh Lord, what do you? If you could, you know, look down from heaven and see your your children and grandchildren, what do you want to see them doing? What would put a smile on your face as you look down on them once you guys have passed on? Seeing them happy, uh -huh. carrying on our family legacy, oh, which, is to, which is to maintain that family relationship, that relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Also to learn how to practice using your money wisely. Mm -hmm. I'm getting into the career careers that you want to be in. Mm -hmm. What else? I think I, I think that I want them to be happy. And I don't want, want them to, uh, both your sister, both your family and your sister's family, to remain that closeness that you guys already yes, have. That, yes. That's what I'd like to see. Now, you have three grandchildren, and we're praying for more. What yes. is that like, you know, being a grandparent? It's wonderful. Fantastic. It brings the energy back Absolutely to you. Absolutely the, the death that was knocking at the door now goes away <laughs> because the grandkids are now in the house. Fantastic. They're loud. They're wonderful. They, they're they excellent. express themselves. Excellent. They all have their different personalities. It's just fun being around it them. It is. They like to do what I like to do, which is swim, be out in nature. You know, they love that. So is it better being a grandparent than a parent? Oh, grandparent. Oh, yes. Yes. oh my goodness. Yes. Yes. Much yes. better. Yes. Yes. They can live with us forever. Yeah, grandkids are fantastic. Yes. Why fantastic. Is, why is being a grandparent better than being a parent? Well, one of the things, let me say this. I, I think your mother and I, when our grandkids are with us, we treat them a little bit differently than you and Connie treat them. I, I was just looking. Um, if they leave something that's supposed to be put away, I'm quite hey, hey, you know, put this away. And they say, sorry, granddaddy, put yeah. it away and go. So they, they have learned that when they're with us, if they move something, they need to put it back. Mm -hmm. um, I do like the way you and Connie discipline as compared to the way we used to discipline. Because when you and your sister were coming up, I said, this, this is not a democratic society. This is a dictatorship. You do what we say But to they do. would say it's dictatorship. You say you're right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but you and Connie, you're... you're more the talking, which is good, so I'm not criticizing that. You're mm -hmm. talking, you're more democratic than we were in bringing you and your sister up. I see. So the advantage of being a grandparent than being a parent is, is what? Then? Oh, one of the things is you can send them back after the time's <laughs> finished. <laughs> but because you've done the main work, all we have to do is reinforce yeah, it. We're not uh -huh. now instilling the work or establishing yeah, the work. It's I already see. done. They're great grandkids. Right, great, so you're great. just building on the foundation right. that the parents have right. already. And we're, Absolutely. and we're more free. You know, mm -hmm. what do you want to do today? Oh, we're going to do so and so. They do their schedule, and we plan their schedule. We go bike riding. We go swimming. We go fishing. We just do we go, the fun We do whatever thing. they the want to do, thing. we do. So yeah. the Grandparents help keep, do grandchildren help keep grandparents alive long? Yes, I think so. Yes, definitely. I think so. Yeah. In fact, sometimes when he's not feeling well or he looks like he's going to pass out, they walk in the door and he's, Granddaddy, let's do so and so. And he's gone. That's it. We enjoy it. So, so what advice would you give to our listening audience who have grandchildren, who are grandparents, or even parents, um, and, and how they should have their children relate to their grandparents as we close out? <laughs> uh, okay. How the, um, one of the things that I, I would say to individuals who are watching this podcast who might be parents, first of all, you need a structure in your home, mm -hmm. uh, some kind of routine that your children are able to follow. And do activities that build bonding time, as my wife would say. It's very, very important to bond. Um, you need to do things together. In fact, later on today, you and your kids are going to be doing things. And that is very important to have activities that you do. Uh, so structure, 
and activities that bond and also, which is the most important thing, uh, relationship with Christ. I agree with everything he said. Well, thank you so much, Mommy and Daddy, for coming to my podcast. I know Mommy was a little bit nervous, but it, it wasn't too bad, was it? No. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope that, and I trust that everyone who was listening was able to gain something to help them in their lives and what they're doing. Again, my name is Attorney Sean Smith here with Law Matters. We invite you to like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we will see you again on our next series. Thank you. Thank you.